Uh, welcome everyone. I can see you all kind of moving into the room as we move up to 27, uh, 33 people. Thank you. Thanks for coming on board and joining us again this Friday for this round table. We've got uh, about 54 people, 58, 60. Um, as we start to build up the numbers, we'll just wait until more and more people come in. It's so great to have you here and it's so great to kind of gather together in this way, in this virtual way. Um, there's now 87 of us, uh, 88. Um, one of the big things I think we've been really struck by is how amazing this new technology can work to for our advantage as well and how we can keep things going. So it's great to, to have you here. Uh, I think I just need to, I'm, I'm learning all the time too what I can and can't do with this technology. Here we go. Um, Marlene, hello, welcome. Yama from here. Um, I'm based in Sydney at the moment. Uh, there's 97 of us all joined in. We're expecting about 150, I think it was, have registered. I think so, a number around there. So we'll just let people uh, wander in. If people don't know the, the little chat uh, box that's around, you can just go down to the bottom of your screen and, and just hover over um, either the chat box that's there that'll open onto the side and you can talk to us all and you can talk to each other. Or also there's a Q&A box that if you just hover over it and open it, you can then ask specific questions um, along this way. Uh, Ryan Clapham, how are you, my friend? Welcome. Good to have you on board. Uh, John Hancock as well. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Marlene, you're very welcome. It's good to, uh, uh, Maylene, sorry, have you uh, on board? Nancy Bamiger. Hello, Nancy. So good to have you on board. There's 114 of us online. We're just waiting for a few more to, to come on board. Um, oh, yes, love my, my pillows. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I bought that fabric at the uh, Darwin Art Fair and made them into... Uh, uh, pillows. There's 116 of us online and we're just waiting for a few more people to join us. Um, Andrea James on Dark and Young Country. Thank you for joining it with us. Elaine Crombie, we talked. I know you're listening on the side of the road. Glad that you stopped traveling so you can wait for us. Emma, thanks for coming on board. There's 119 of us that have signed in already and um, we're just going to wait for a few more to join us before we start going. Um, Alex Marsden, uh, thanks for coming on board, Alex. Thank you very much. Pauline Clegg, lovely to see you, sister. Good to have you here. There's 124 of us lining up to come in now. Uh, Bettina from far north Queensland, or as we like to say, the tropical north Queensland. There's almost 200 registered is what I'm being told as well. Wayne Barker, welcome. Patrick Mao, happy birthday for yesterday, Patrick. Oh, is it today? I think it was yesterday. Happy birthday to you. Good to have you here. Claire Coleman as well. Uh, Greg uh, Hodgkinson, um, Phil, uh, Bill Pheasant. Oh, it's all moving so quickly. Oh, it was yesterday, Patrick. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Uh, Gina Williams, all the way from Noongabuja. Good to see you here. Thank you very much. Uh, Nadine McDonald, how are you, my sister? There in Brisbane town. Uh, oh, Stephanie, oh, my cousin there. Stephanie Parkin, good to see you there. Everyone coming in. Hey, watch out. It's only relatives of mine coming on board here. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the way it is. We've got 126 on board now and we've been waiting for four minutes. Uh, I see Millie from Jute in Cairns here. Felicity in the Wit Sundays. Um, who is Luke Curry Richards. Hey, how are you? We are all your family. I'm all your family, Luke. Good to have you here. Just seeing we've kind of evened off now at 128 by the looks of it. So we might be getting ready to start very soon. Oh, 129, or someone just popping in there. Penny Smallicum, good to see you there, love. Uh, Kim McConville, lovely. Great to see you there. Hey, my people, Andrew Toby, how are you, my love? Uh, Genoa, Genoa Gila, how are you? Oh, look, it's lovely to have so many people, you know, from near and far, all across this continent, coming together to have this conversation. There's about 130 of us and we're going to start very soon. So I'm just talking like I'm, I'm known to do, just talk like I'm under wet concrete here. Um, or even dry concrete, I'll talk, I think. doesn't really, Nothing's going to stop it. Uh, who else is here? Oh, Lily Shearer. Hello, lovely. You're not late. 
you're never late. You're just working on lily time. Good to have you. All right. We've got 130 online and hopefully we'll have some more people join us as we go through. So we might make a start now. We've got only this next hour to have these chats. Can I say thank you so much for coming together from whatever country you're on at this point in time across this incredible continent that we are here to look after each other, look after our culture, look after our land through the telling of our stories and the connecting with each other. It's a very troubling time for many of us as we feel this social isolation. And for many of us, our livelihoods too, our, the dollars that feed our families and pay our rent, uh, many of us are feeling that, that, that's, that tension and duress. So it's great to have us all here. We acknowledge the elders of the countries that you're standing on, sitting on now, but also our, our, our leaders who are around us and teaching us how we can go forward through these times. So we pay our respects and like to start this first nation's arts roundtable, the second of its kind, second of its name here, and we kind of move on. Um, moving to the next slide, I'd just like to say, my name is Wesley Enoch. I'm the chair of the Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander Art Strategy Panel, but I'm also a, a, a Kwandamooka man from Kwandamooka country, just off the coast of Brisbane there. And just to pay my respects there to, to all of my family who are joining in here as well. And just uh, Lydia Miller needs no introduction. But hello. Lydia, you want to say hello? And she did say hello. How was that? I did. Um, Welcome to everybody. <laughs> Welcome to everybody. <laughs> We're all in our separate rooms and houses and stuff. This, this is my home behind me. Welcome to my house. And we've got a, a little bit of an agenda to go through. If we move to the next slide, that the agenda is talking about these important issues, just about the, a chance to connect, to share, to bring ideas to the fore, to network and to navigate that this is what we're hoping to do by bringing ourselves together in this way. And that you may have actually a lot of questions that we may not have all the answers for. And that's why it's important to just look at the, uh, down on the bottom of your screen, you'll see, as I said before, there's a little chat logo that if you click on that, you can then open a little chat, which is over on the side, which you'll be able to see. And then also there's a Q and A. And if you hit on that, you can ask questions, very specific questions, and we'll be having a look at those uh, along the way. There's someone offline. I think it's Joanne's going to be looking at those questions and just kind of rolling them through as we go. If we move to the next slide, just the, uh, the, uh, the agenda for today is that we've got this housekeeping, which we've done, uh, the key issues, which we'll talk about in a second, the things that have come through from last week's webinar, um, also a little grants update, and then we've got four guest speakers and they'll be speaking for about 10 minutes each. Uh, we'll introduce them as we go through, but you can see their names there. And they'll be talking a little bit about what they're doing uh, in terms of their projects or what they're doing to get through this particular moment. And also the, the different um, ideas that you might be able to benefit from as well to get involved in. And then we'll have a pulse check, which is a chance for you to talk a little bit about what you're going through to give us some kind of feedback and then also a setting in the agenda of what's next, what can we collectively work on. As you can appreciate, there are so many things moving so quickly and that we may not have all the answers here now, but this opportunity to come together is going to be very, very important. If we move to the next slide, this um, uh, idea of the, the housekeeping I've just been talking about, the, the idea of how to get involved. There's 146 of us online. And if we all talk at once, we may not be able to hear everyone. But uh, the chat button down there on underneath, if you just hover down the bottom, you'll see them come up and the Q&A, just get those two things there. Uh, uh, Don Pemrose, who I think is in Canberra at the moment. Good to see you there. Um, uh, Bibi Baba. Barbara, is there? Oh, so many people joining in. Uh, anonymous attendee, hello, welcome. Just to say that this Q&A box that you're in there is actually for really clear questions. If you want to have a chat, the chat box might be better for you. So just to keep an eye on, on how those two things are going along the way. Right, what we might do is skip to the next slide. We're here until three o'clock. And last week when we got together, 
we identified nine issues that came out of the discussion there. So the ideas of the feelings of isolation and frustration with no clear timeframes on the pandemic. And to be honest, we may not have an answer to that. Um, so that there's a little bit more of a, uh, we're all waiting to see how the curve either you know, flattens out or how it reacts. So this feeling of isolation and frustration, I think we do have to work on what are the things that we're putting in place to look after ourselves or our mental health, as well as our physical health and the health of our families. The other one is the impact on sole traders. And there's some, uh, a number of packages being put together now. And you'll find the Australia Council is putting a lot of materials now on the website. So um, after this, you could actually go back and have a little look and see what different links uh, to, to different um, uh, things are coming through, especially for sole traders. You know that the, the government put forward that um, the, the Centrelink thing that everyone's trying to get a hold of now, how to at least get that kind of uh, regular payments. Have a look at that to try to get you through. Uh, connectivity issues, saying not just about the internet, but how the internet works across um, this continent and how we work in our different countries. This idea of also how we stay connected to each other um, being a very important cultural viewpoint as well. Um, uh, we've also got the impact on the creative processes and the cultural losses. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. I know uh, our guest speakers will maybe uh, be addressing some of these issues as we go along. The jurisdictional responses to impact on the First Nations communities, just that basically meaning how are the states or the local governments dealing with this? And um, we can have a conversation about that. It's interesting to see like Pat Turner or oh, a fortnight ago now saying, shut Aboriginal communities so that these, these um, people with diseases can't come in uh, and, and do that. And I was talking to Philip just before, and he was saying that um, in Alice, the two, two cases there of people who travelled from overseas and now are in Alice. And that's interesting to, to look at because it could move into our communities very, very easily. So just keep an eye on those things. Um, movement restrictions, which we've just mentioned, how that's going to impact. That's a big issue for us. Uh, also, what are support strategies? We'll talk about that. Oh, sorry, how to make work. Uh, is a big issue. We'll talk about that in a second. And support strategies, we're getting there. And also st stimulus packages. More and more information is coming to light. Uh, and I know even the, this afternoon, I think the, the arts minister was talking to um, the MEAA, the, the different artists' unions, and getting unions into, into the discussion there. Um, Deborah Linus is saying local councils are also looking at packages to help local artists, especially in the inner west of Sydney. There's an interesting kind of idea. How are local um, councils playing a role in supporting artists and cultural activities in their particular area? There were some of the key issues and questions. If you, in fact, want to, you can, in the chat area or in the Q&A box, you can add your questions now. We may not be able to answer all of them today, but bring them all together. There's 153 of us online at the moment, which is great. I see that uh, Leanne Buckskin has joined us and it's great to have Leanne, who's the deputy chair of the Australia Council has just joined us there and said hello in the chat box. And Joanne Brown there responding that Leanne is online. It's like Elvis is in the building. It's fantastic. So lots of people saying hello to Leanne there. Um, so some of those key issues, we will address some of them today, but a lot of them look at the information that the Australia Council is getting together, go over and have a look at that. Just in terms of the, the chat box, I just want to be clear too, apparently you can look at the two, There's a, in the box there it says two, it says all panellists. You can talk to very uh, particular panellists too, or all the, all the panel, panellists and, and attendees in that way. Um, so just check and see or you can choose to talk to one person in particular, have a little go Dory gossip session off to the corner if you want to talk to them specifically. So just look at that little, in my computer, it's highlighted as all panellists and you can just kind of tip, tap on that and go down. Uh, Marinda, thank you for coming on board. Greg, I see you there as well. Everyone's saying hello to Leanne. It's great to have Leanne back uh, in, in the room with us. Um, uh, Genoa Gila is saying to us, as a sole trader, how do people support their families at home? My income or lack thereof is a major source to support my parents. How is everyone navigating to look after their family from long away? 
there's a very important issue that from long way away, how do you keep money flowing, especially in this time? It's a, a very challenging time. All right, I think we've got 156 of us online and many of us joining. Katina Olson, great to see you there. Um, Lewis Burns also. Uh, Debbie Higginson, uh, everyone's saying hello to Leanne. Leanne, you must be the most popular person ever. It's so lovely to have you around and being in here. All right, we might move on to the next slide then so we can keep moving along. This is all about the grants and the grants uh, updates. Uh, excuse me as I go to my iPad now. Yes, I know. So flash, so many screens. Who knew this was all possible? Um, so what you see on your screen is just talking about some of the ways that uh, especially the Australia Council is making arrangements to shift things around and to help support people. Just know that the Australia Council is very, very keen on supporting artists and making sure that artists feel supported that there's a lot of ways that if you've got a grant or if you're feeling a little anxious about how you're gonna deliver that grant, just talk to people at the Australia Council. We value you. You are the front line of, the, of how our stories, of how our, certain elements of our culture go out there. So just make sure you talk to the Australia Council about, if you want to just change the grant, make some shifts and changes along the way. And the Australia Council is very open to that. You know, you're very, very important to us. Um, for organisations and individuals who have a current Australia Council arrangement, we're adopting a very flexible approach. So, you know, removing different requirements to meet audience key, um, key performance indicators, you'll know what these means. Bringing forward payments, if you need payments now, you know, talk to us about that. Delaying or simplifying reporting requirements. You know, if you, if you don't have the time to do everything, make sure it's clear and just maybe simplified and get that across to us. Um, if you need to change the purpose of a, of a piece of funding or the outcomes, because that's shifting, have a look at that. Extending some timelines for projects. So if you need to do it, you know, you're meant to finish it in April. Oh, well, goodness, it might be October or even February next year, looking at changing the timelines and allowing organisations to use money that's provided for um, deliverables to be repurposed to pay essential bills like wages. Lydia, Tell us why, why is the Australia Council doing this and, and how is it working for you on the ground there? Uh, many people last week asked what would happen with their grants and what would happen with their projects accordingly. So on that basis, flexibility, we understand, is incredibly important for people because now you have to absolutely rethink how you're going to use those monies for a project if you can't have it take place as you imagine before various restrictions came in and all the levels of um, containment that are occurring across the country. So we really want you to talk with us and the grants officers who you have a relationship with, ring them and talk uh, it through with them. We know many people are doing such things as um, thinking about how they can support any artists in some of their projects with a creative development period. Can they repurpose those monies to support those artists if there's no outcome, so to speak? All of these considerations we're really mindful of and people have got lots of ideas how they can actually still manage a project and still get some uh, creative activity happening. So please uh, contact those grants officers. Um, in respect to four-year funding announcements, um, you have on the screen, there will be a communication on the 30th of March. Um, and in regards to any contracts that you think are in place, uh, it's pretty good if you talk to Arts Law Centre and they can navigate you through this. There's lots and lots of um, resources and industry bodies who are in your respective art form area, I think, who have also got fantastic ideas. So follow those industry bodies. And we'll have resources down the side of the First Nations Roundtable page as well over the next few weeks so that you can go and access them. Excellent. Thank you so much. I was just reading here, um, Patina is saying she's about to launch in Cairns, Indigenous Women's Artist Business Support Program for Far North Queensland, funded by the Queensland Government. It's free to participants. So if you want to check out Patina and the Indigenous Women's Artists uh, in terms of their business support program that's there. Um, just the next slide for us, please. So just remembering that you can contact the Australia Council um, there's lots of different ways to look at the reporting and grant relief, online learning series, digital supports, uh, adjustments to the four-year funding. Have a little look at how that's going to work. I know, Lydia, that uh, March 30 
um, many four-year funded organisations will find out the outcome of that grant. That's that's still the case? Yes, we'll be keeping all of those uh, appli applicants informed of what the current arrangements are. So that will come on 30th of March next week. Um, also, I guess of interest to people is that we've suspended some of our investment programs and that information is also online. Those, that has enabled us to essentially get a package of $5 million and that is basically to support the immediate relief to artists, arts workers and arts organisations. So the, we will come forward with additional information and detail about that. So we will keep rolling out um, what those particular activities could uh, be to support people in this new environment that we're all dealing with. We're also starting an online learning series, and that's really important, Creative Connections. And there's such a, a range of topics, everything from how do you get into the digital space, what, what to think about with monetizing, um, what does creativity mean at this given point in time, what are some of your considerations on legals, a great range of speakers. Um, and it's really worthwhile to kind of tap into that. Um, of course, we have First Nations support, and that's these roundtables, and that's to connect us, to share, to network, and to navigate this new future for the next few months. That will happen every Friday um, from 2 to 3 p.m. And as you can see, there are panel set, uh, panelists joining us for this session, and they will in, in the future as well. There's also digital support, and Australia Council has opened up a Facebook group called Arts and Creative Industry Digital Support. This is for presentations and for people to share their work on a platform if they're not at present um, connected to any other um, Facebook groups. There's also Australian, uh, Australian Arts and COVID-19, and they've been terrific in terms of being able to help people navigate what you do with accessing the Job Seekers Allowance or issues about rent. Um, so that is, please follow up with those ones because there's lots of information flowing at the moment. The other, which is really important, is about research and analysis. And this is to enable us to gather data about the impacts of COVID-19 and to really get a good picture of what this impact has been for people's livelihoods. So that's the initial response package we have. And then, of course, lots of information will flow. Thanks, Wesley. Thank you very much. There's a few questions that are coming through. Um, do we need to get arts law to help artists navigate with regards to contracts and fact sheets there? Maybe next session, looking at how to navigate the legal structures. And also, should we, <laughs> here we go, should we grab some of that money that was put aside for um, that gammon circumnavigation uh, of Captain Cook or Lieutenant Cook's thing for First Nations arts? I, I asked the same question recently. I said, oh, these are spirits say, telling us we're not going to uh, look at this anniversary at all. Uh, but apparently I'm told it, it is going ahead. They, they are still going to go around the country in that boat um, in that very un, uh, unhistorical rubbish that is going around. Uh, lots of questions there. We can't get to all of you at the moment, but um, we'll have a little look. Uh, Zane Saunders, great to have you on board. Uh, I saw um, Ben Gratz come in. Great to get you through that technical issue there, uh, Ben. And um, some wonderful Alison Williams, uh, Pauline Clegg saying if uh, New South Wales is there, also Business Connect. Business Connect is also there if you're in New South Wales. She's an advisor on the Creative Plus business. You get four sessions over... Uh, for free, sorry, over a period to look at your business and help give you resources and financing. So have a look at that. Um, uh, Elaine Crombie saying, for crying out loud in a bucket, Cook's boat eye roll, she says. So yes, um, the Endeavour 2020 equals the, the Ruby Princess. Thank you, Amala Kroon, for that insight. Um, next, uh, next slide for us, please. Um, what we've got here is now four speakers and we've got to 10 minutes each for, for them. I might even shave a couple of minutes off um, to look at just some of the ways they're dealing with that. So I might just hand straight over to Ali Murphy Oates for the Managing Director at Mugglin Performing Arts to talk a little bit about what she and Mugglin are doing. Yama everyone. Hi, I'm Ali. I'm a proud Nyampa Wawan woman. Um, I'm sitting here on uh, the border of Gwaigal, Bidjigal country next to Gwaigal Botany Bay. Um, and yeah, I'm Managing Director of Mughal Performing Arts. It's very funny, my housemate's in the other room watching and singing out. Hello, G. <laughs> um, uh, Mughal and Performing Arts is, uh, we develop, produce and present work, for those of you who don't know us, um, across a range of performing arts. 
We're based in Sydney, uh, usually at Carriage Works, but now uh, from the comfort of our own homes. Um, we also are a company in residence at Blacktown Arts Centre. We do a lot of work in Bulwarana, far, far north New South Wales, and, you know, the world. Um, and we sit in a national context of small to medium performing arts orgs. So shout out to Ibidri Theatre Company and Yuri Arkin and Black Dance too. Um, uh, I'm going to talk just very quickly about two programs that we are working on at the moment. Um, the first being Moogle Live. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so uh, last week we launched this as an online response to the impact that our cultural arts community is uh, currently experiencing uh, through limits on outdoor and indoor gatherings and now social isolation and, and, and full lockdown, hopefully, um, uh, as a way of providing paid gigs, however small, online to our artists. Um, we are asking artists to take over our Facebook page every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, and we've just done our first week of it. We had Cheeky Tune Song and Dance Party on Monday morning uh, to do a great session for kids. Um, Tim Gray on Wednesday nights did a, a beautiful solo uh, piano and, and uh, a piano concert. Um, Katina Olsen this morning led us through a meditation and movement workshop. Uh, and next week we're going to have the deadly um, Dobby, Brian Clapham, uh, Marcus Corowa and uh, Lily Shearer joining us. And we'll put that information up on our uh, website and Facebook page shortly. Um, we're looking at people doing Facebook Lives that are rough and ready and interactive, uh, joining, joining people up from their own homes for a chance to just get a bit silly and have fun online. Uh, and it can be anything from solo concerts, dance workshops, comedy sets, uh, acting masterclasses, uh, story time, uh, anything. Um, we're, and the videos will then continue to live online on our Facebook gallery. So hopefully we're developing some some entertainment uh, and some content for folks to access uh, while we're all going through this very weird time. Um, it's a call out for artists. So if you go to our website, uh, www.mogalin.org, uh, you'll be able to click on it and see the, the um, uh, G, can you turn the volume down? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Uh, you'll be able to click on our on Moogle Live via our homepage and see the artist application there. Um, and it's a pilot. We're testing it out as we go. It's just a way of trying to get our, everyone to connect, um, to be creative, uh, and to you know to to kind of you know share and stay strong in our uh, creative cultural arts. Uh, you know, in a really re responsive way. Um, and so one of the ways we'll be testing it out, if we can move to the next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so Bayamis Nungu Festival is a, a community cultural arts festival that we usually hold in Brewarana, far north New South Wales, um, in mid-April every year. Um, it was planned for 17th to 19th of April uh, and then a week and a half ago, we uh, decided to postpone because we didn't want to contribute to any spread of uh, the virus by encouraging travel uh, either from the city or, or between uh, uh, regional areas. Um, it's a community cultural arts festival that celebrates the oldest man-made structures, one of the oldest man-made structures in the world, the fish traps. Um, uh, and the Barwon River, which is the lifeblood of the of all of the people around the far northwest of New South Wales, uh, we since deciding to postpone, we're now realising that even a postponement to later this year may not be an option. So we are looking now at generating uh, a whole lot of online content, a mix of live feeds. Uh, another Facebook Live takeover uh, series um, and pre-recorded content of new new stuff from from folks out in Bree uh, and uh, performances from previous festivals that we will be uh, putting out on our social media over the weekend of the 17th to 19th of April. So that's just two ways of how we're trying to continue to be active, to be creative, uh, to be 
um, uh, working with artists and providing gigs while we're currently physically distant but socially solid. <laughs> it's a, a quick couple of questions there, Ellie. Um, so you pay for people to come and, and take over and be part of this, uh, the Muggle Live? Yes, this is a paid gig. Uh, it's uh, a flat fee. Um, it is, uh, what, it, what is involved is uh, a, a couple of video chats, consultation with myself or another Muggle and staff to, to uh, talk through your idea to see how you might frame it. I'm, I'm not sure if anyone's seeing my face right now, but uh, you know, to look at actually how you might present via Facebook Live. Um, and then they, they take over our Facebook. Um, I see a question from Andrew Toby, how do we apply or register? So I'm gonna repeat, uh, head to www.mugalin, M-O-O-G-A-H-L-I-N.org, uh, and you'll see it via our homepage on our website. Ali, thank you so much for that. And congratulations to all at Mugulin for this quick response in trying to get everyone there. Uh, Jacob Ridgeway, there's a huge question there. I haven't had a chance to quickly read it. I'll, I'll get to ask that uh, question in a second once we, we get the next speaker going. Just to be aware that Michael West has joined us. Eva Grace from Uriakin has joined us, which is Grace. And, and uh, Joel Bray, who was just saying how fantastic everything is. Lots of people being very supportive of what you're doing, Ali, and all the, all the moogs. I didn't realise that was a... Uh, what we were calling the people at Muggle and all the Mugs there. Um, so, little term. <laughs> lovely to have you there. We're going to move on to the next speaker then. If we can move on to the next slide there. Travis DeVries, who's an artist, a writer and producer, works a lot online. Uh, Travis, tell us a little bit about what you're doing and the different projects you've got as well. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Travis, a uh, Gamilaroi man from uh, the Hunter Valley. Um, so... Uh, I guess what I'm talking about today is um, like in the last few years of my practice, um, I'm a concept artist, visual artist um, and producer. Um, and in the last few years, I've turned to podcasting and moving a lot of my uh, work online. Um, now, one of the things I've been doing during all of that is um, taking a big moment to do some learning. Um, and research of how things look across the industry, um, not just in Australia, but overseas as well. Um, and particularly how you can work to monetize um, your online platforms. Um, because basically the way things work is that um, people don't like to pay for things online. Uh, they're very used to uh, receiving all of their content for free. Um, and so a few of the things that you can do, can we jump to the next slide, please? Uh, a few of the things we can do to, um, kind of mitigate that is, um, create, uh, uh, packages for people that they will pay for, um, to help support and go back into the artist's pocket. Um, so... I have been working on a project um, for the last year um, alongside my podcast for originals. Um, and that is uh, a project called Awesome Black, um, which is a digital content platform um, for First Nations artists. Um, so I'm launching it today. Um, I was originally going to be launching it in June. Um, so it's still a little bit in beta. Um, but it's an essentially a network uh, like a commercial TV station that represents First Nations artists um, who are making creative stuff in the online space. Um, so this includes podcasts, gaming, videos, artists, um, and kind of it can expand to become uh, open to other artists as it needs to. Um, and so what this platform does is it gives people a platform to put work out, um, but it also gives people, um, audiences, a platform to support those artists. Uh, if we can jump to the next slide. Um, so if you go to www.awesomeblack.org, um, you'll see the uh, beta website as it is now, um, and the 
uh, content that is currently up there, um, as well as how all the slide, uh, how all the website works, and how um, putting content up works. Um, so there's uh, podcasts, video, gaming, um, and then if you jump to the next slide, please. Um, so this is how the creative content food chain works. So our creatives um, who join the collective um, make content, they send it to Awesome Black and we put it up online. Um, and then it gets distributed out through the various platforms that audiences are already connecting with. So we don't want to create a new platform. Um, what, a new, we don't want to create a new end user space. What we want to do is just create a funnel where audiences can support and content goes out to all of the different platforms. So some of these platforms are Twitch, which is um, mostly for gaming, uh, but also a lot of visual artists and musicians use it to live stream their work. Um, one of the kind of pros of it is that it has a huge user base of really engaged people um, and you can monetize directly through it. Um, as Ali was talking about with Moogle Live, you can use Facebook Live. Um, and it's a great platform because everyone is already on Facebook. Uh, the other thing you can do is make a podcast and that's the RSS feed. Um, and then one of the other ones is YouTube. And I would assume that we all know what YouTube is. Um, but you can live stream and you can uh, make work that sits there um, and you can make work that live stream and then gets deleted after it's live stream. And you can do that across Twitch, Facebook Live and YouTube. Um, so a lot of these have actual um, digital uh, sovereignty built into it if you set it up to work that way. There's a quick um, question here, Travis, from uh, Mailin saying, do you have to pay for membership? Travis, to, to... No, absolutely not. So um, basically, if you want to be a part of um, Awesome Black, all you need to do is um, get in touch with me at hello at awesomeblack.org um, and just start the conversation. Um, you can pitch an idea for some digital content and we'll get you up there. Um, and then if we jump to the next slide, I'll talk about how the finances work. So basically, um, as you put content on to Awesome Black, 95% of it goes out for free to your audiences because this is how um, audiences on the internet um, consume, consume uh, art. Um, we then hold 5% of that back as members only content. Um, and so your audience can join as members for a small fee of um, $2 a month. So it's like a subscription service. So this is one of the kind of ways that you monetize stuff on the internet. Um, we, once we, one of the big reasons for making this um, platform is that um, there's safety in numbers on the internet. So if you all band together and create a large audience, you can attract sponsors and advertisers. Um, so this is a way that we can like band our audience together and then we can go out to advertisers and say, we have this many people in our audience, um, advertise with us because your products can then reach them. Um, um, Travis, uh, Ruth has a question about who owns the copyright here then? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and super important in terms of, um, uh, IP for work. So all of the creatives own their own work and continue to own that throughout. Um, Awesome Black is just the funnel for that work to go, to be monetized. Um, the other way to um, bring in money for creatives is merchandise sales. So each creative will, um, will work with them to help develop a merchandise line and work with our merch partners to produce them. Um, and so 80% of all profits from um, every creator's income streams goes directly to those creators and then 20% goes into Awesome Black to cover running costs and continuing to build the platform. Yeah, it's kind of like a portal, baby. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's launching today. Um, jump onto the website now and have a look. It is still in beta. Um, uh, and, but get in touch with me, um, hello at awesomeblack.org. Um, and let's start the conversation um, and start getting people's stuff 
up on the net. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to just jump back to is um, with the membership. So one of the ways to kind of hold di digital sovereignty and kind of create audiences that are um, can only access some things if you've got uh, artwork that you don't want necessarily entire public to see is to create um, this members only content or you can uh, you can create members only content or specific audience content that people have to sign up for. Um, and we can do that through this platform. Um, so you have to kind of log in and become like a secret kind of member of this section of the website. And then, and only then can you get access to that. So it's a good way to uh, share, share this um, with just those people who, if you're kind of doing that, working in digital sovereignty space. Excellent. Um, yeah. Great stuff, Travis. Just for those people who are asking again, it's hello at awesomeblack.org. Is that right? That hello is right. At awesomeblack.org if you need to know more about that. And people saying, like um, Elaine Crombie saying that, oh, great, she's just found a home then for her web series she was working, like, working on then. There's lots of different places that you can do that. Great initiative, people saying. It's fantastic to have you there. Uh, Sharina Clanton, if you're there, yes, we are recording this, so you will be able to go back and look at what we did last week as well as this week uh, as it goes through. Um, Wayne Barker asked the question about, uh, well, actually just saying that this time is very important as the we try to keep the virus out of our uh, communities and the vulnerable members of our community, but also a great opportunity to remind ourselves to record the stories of our community in these times as well. Make sure that we're recording all the stories and get that down in place. So folks, that was hello at awesomeblack.org. We're going to move on to our next speaker, um, where, uh, as we move on to, oh, there we are, there's the next slide already. Philip Watkins is the Chief Executive Officer as, at Desart. He's also a really deadly bloke. So, uh, Philip, over to you. Oh, have we lost Philip? Philip, you might need to unmute your, your, your microphone there. Just so we'll be able to hear you. Unmute yourself. There we go. Yep, got it. Off you go. We yeah. can hear you now. Um, thank you. And um, hello to everybody. I'm sitting down in Alice Springs and um, waiting for this wave to, to hit us. Um, my my uh, talk is a little bit different from, from the others. Uh, so Desert, we're a peak body for uh, representing 35 Aboriginal art centres located in in Central Australia and uh, crossing borders of NT into South Australia and into Western Australia. Um, in recent times, we've, we've been doing a body of research and it's a financial snapshot of art centres and primarily looking at Queensland, Northern Territory, Western Australia and South Australia, where the majority of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander art centres are located and primarily looking at those that are funded under the uh, Commonwealth Indi Indigenous Visual Arts Industry Support Program. Um, and so within that, that region, um, there's approximately 21,000 artists who engage with art centres, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander artists. Um, art centres, they're um, community focused, they're um, culturally driven enterprises and are, are a hybrid, balancing both social and cultural priorities. Uh, with creative and commercial uh, commercial ones as well. So we've um, we've looked at a whole lot of oh have we lost have we lost Philip or have you lost me? Where's me? It's Ali. Philip is frozen on my screen. Oh yes, Philip's frozen on my screen. Oh Philip, we've lost you there. Um, what we might do is we might just push on. We might and go. Oh, oh, Philip, are you there? Yeah. Oh, sorry. We just lost the last thing you just said there. We might go to the next slide yep. and just go through and move us on to talk about the sales. Is that what you wanted to do? So the report that we've we've uh, undertaken or the the work we've undertaken is based on information from two sources: art centre audits and extracts from uh, operational data sets. And so over 600 audits in that period, 2004, five to 1819 were looked at, as well as operational data set, uh, 
close to 700 operational data sets. Um, I'll let you just re read that bit, but um, you can jump to the next slide. Um, so uh, we've, look, we've looked at a whole lot of data, a whole lot of data, both uh, financial as well as demographic. But I'll just focus on on a few in this short time that I have. Um, but we've seen that after sales falling, just pro, just as a result of the global financial crisis, um, we've moved back and and recovered nearly to the point where we were back at that time. So it's taken nearly 10 years to get back to the point um, in, in terms of sales income. And you can go to the next set, next slide. But you can see that in the four jurisdictions we looked at, um, it's, it's been a bit different. And so we can see in Queensland, well, there has been a, uh, sorry, in South Australia, there has been a a peak, it's starting to decline, whereas the others um, are the stable um, or continuing to increase. So it's very much dependent on the jurisdiction. But but overall, um, there's been an average growth uh, in sales income of around five, five and a half percent uh, in the period uh, since 2011-12. Uh, Next slide. Um, the, the, one of the other uh, sets we looked at was around grant, grants income. And the majority of art centres do rely on grants. And again, you can see a pattern where um, leading, up to the, leading up to the global financial crisis, uh, sales income was the dominant source of income for art centres. Um, and that's kind of, that plateaued as a result of the global financial um, crisis at you know, at that time, um, but what we're starting to see now is a trend where we're recovering sales income is becoming much more um, dominant in terms of um, uh, income art centres generate. Next slide. And again, you can see that it's uh, very much dependent on the jurisdiction. And in the case of Queensland, um, uh, there was a peak in terms of grants um, that related to uh, uh, a whole lot of investment through through government on, on the one hand, but grants also include um, across all, all the jurisdictions um, operational uh, employment money um, state state funding for infrastructure so a whole lot of different uh, sources uh, art centers are securing grants from but it's it 's also very much dependent on in terms of where um, which which state, but uh, generally we're seeing that trend away from grant reliance on grants back to income, which has significant impact given the situation we we currently confronting. Next slide. Um, so the other thing we looked at is is the artists and who are the artists and. Um, what we know through through the research we've been doing is that um, uh, women artists um, now produce around seventy, nearly nearly eighty percent of artworks coming out of art centres. Again, um, it's very much dependent on on the state that you're in, um, but as you can see, the majority of of work produced produced um, out of art centres is women. And if we can jump to the next slide. Um, that uh, we can see that the proportion of, of artworks produced are from um, women over the age of 50. Um, and in particular, um, again, it's, it's also very much um, depending on the jurisdiction, but generally the trend is that the majority of artwork is made by women um, 50, and, 50 and older. Can I go to the next slide? Well, that's it. That's it. Okay. That's, the, that's all the slides we have, Philip, which yeah. is great. There are a few questions here that are rising up about, do you, do you imagine that we'll see a, a significant fall in sales as, as a result of this 
well, this pandemic, but then the economic out outcomes. Yeah, definitely. So there's a, there's a few things that sort of um, go, go to that point. One is that um, with the emergence of national arts fairs um, in recent times, they have a significant contributor to, to art centre um, income. Um, and when I say art centre, I'm really talking it's artist income that we're talking about. So yeah. they've just basically been wiped out um, for the foreseeable future, definitely for this year. And I'm including, um, I'm including um, arts fairs that are uh, like the Darwin Aboriginal Arts Fair, um, potentially CAIAF, um, Desert Mob. Um, although I know that all the organisations are looking at possibilities in terms of online um, online strategies that that may mitigate some of that. Um, but at this point, we don't know. Yeah, I, um, I, I think in another month or so, we'll have a much clearer vision of what the outcomes this year will be, let alone ongoing. I'm just seeing Alex Marsden, you've written a, a big note here about uh, what potential uh, collaborations are possible, especially uh, within Infrastructure Australia's kind of conversation. That, that, that'll be interesting to, to have a look at. This whole conversation about recovery. Just, I've got Elaine Crombie t telling me too that, They've got some videos to be uploaded from artists on the um, the MIA website, the M E W A website, to have a little look at that uh, as well. She's going to drop uh, a link into our chat uh, chat window in a second for that as well. But I guess what, what you're also saying, Philip, there is that we're almost in a ten year. We'll have to build a ten year recovery strategy as well. A ten year recovery recovery um, at minimum, because I think the impact of the GFC. Um, wasn't uh, there, there's factors that are happening now that didn't didn't exist at that time, um, including things like the art the arts fairs they weren't as prevalent. Um, but what really concerned what you know the trends here is what what sort of I've got more questions than than answers at the moment. But thinking about strategies that will uh, support the income of artists in remote communities, particularly if those art centres um, shut their doors as, as, you know, in response to the emergency. How can we continue to support artists and particularly a cohort of artists um, that are significant holders of cultural knowledge? And, yes. that, um, and, and the stats tell us that the, the majority of artists are in that, that cohort, um, but also, um, the women and the role that they play in in, yes. com in family and community economy, and uh, and without that income coming in, uh, what you know the, the potential impacts there, and um, you know uh, they they're not necessarily going to be good. Yes. Um, so, um, and what I'm We're running out of time, so we do have to move on. Yeah. I think that all of that information is fantastic. I know that Wayne Barker here is saying yes. It's interesting to see eighty percent of the art product is produced by women over fifty years. And what are we doing to look after those uh, those artists during this period of time? Thank you so much, Philip. Sorry to, to cut you short there. We're just moving on now to um, our next slide, Ben Gratz. Um, ben, Ben's a producer, uh, an actor. I knew him as an actor, a director, a maker of work, but also a, a great supporter of other artists. I mean, Ben, what are you seeing around the country that uh, of things that we need to look out for and how do we support each other through this? Yeah, hello everyone. I'm Ben Gratz here, living on Larrakia country. I'm Iwaja Malak Malak and from my family from Badu Island on the Torres Straits. Um, hello to everyone out there and all the family I can see popping up. So hello everyone. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm talking about this idea of a, of a digital think tank. And I mean, that's, that's a huge thing to unpack. And so I'm just going to talk a little bit about where I'm at at the moment, because as you mentioned, yeah, I've um, I've been around and also in very, I've, wear, I've worn many different hats. And so I think the biggest thing for me at the moment is um, everything is moving exceptionally fast. And when I look back and go, it's only been a week, I feel like I've been in this for six months. And, you know, it, I just, I'm actually, I had a really bad sleep last night because I've been so anxious and like, Day to day, I feel differently. Hour to hour, I feel differently about um, being an independent artist, you know, working on um, major events. You know, my whole livelihood and it, my, my whole uh, ethos of how I operate is about connecting people and physically being with people. And our culture is about being with people and being in groups of people and 
you know, I just had this freak out this morning about, I don't know when I'm going to be able to hug my mum again because I'm actually self-isolating at the moment. And I'm like, how, the, the physical nature of, of where we're at and just seeing how fast everything is moving actually brings anxiety itself. And I, I feel like we're in this different world already that I'm like, did I miss the memo? Like, where's, the, where, where's my invitation? Um, and so one thing that I am loving, though, is about, you know, this world is I've, I've connected with people in a way um, I've seen more of you, Wesley, than I have over a year. You know what I mean? Like I'm connecting virtually with people more than I ever have. But there's, but this sense of what is the world we're moving into? Um, and so, you know, a big, a big question for me is how can we be socially connected as one during this time and something that's come out of the Tri Nation, which is an international council, which is interchangeable, but you know, about the performing arts and working together um, as an international sector. How do we keep connected during this time? How do we work on our international protocols? How do we work on virtual protocols? Because um, Travis did mention about digital sovereignty, but my question is how do we operate in a non Indigenous virtual world? and keep our sovereignty. I just feel like at the moment we are moving so fast, but we are giving away too much. And I just did a little Google um, about the owner of Zoom because I'm fascinated about all these things. And since Monday, he's made $20 million um, and he wasn't ranked in the Bloom, um, Bloomberg Billionaire Index, but he is now um, 274 on the billionaires list. And he is now one of the, the highest paid billionaires in the world since this year. And so there's something also about our language that we're using around um, social distancing, where I've changed that to physical distancing. Um, this essential, I, I think that's why I woke up last night. It's because it's a, just about these essential workers and there's miners out there as essential workers. There's hairdressers that are essential workers. But I'm like, well, what am I? Am I not an essential person to this community? And I think the validation of who we are as people and as a community and as blackfellas, I think, I think we need to take a step back, have a breath before we give away too much. We've already given away too much as it is, you know what I mean? And, you know, I look at the Australia Council and all the work that's gone into protocols in our performing arts world which is a huge big beast, but you know, this virtual world is, is a new territory for us. And also my concerns are, you know, what about these remote communities? What about the communities up north or just west, east and south that can't get internet, that aren't a part of these conversations? Like wh wh where are they in this conversation? And so, you know, I think that there's something extraordinary about us coming together doing this speaking immediately seeing people and connecting but i but there's a concern about it moving too fast and you know this virtual sovereignty and you know the words we're using oh people man everyone's like, just saying you, these are all very very important things i mean it's you're being overwhelmed by people just agreeing with you here yeah. what do you think what's the step that we need to do to go forward do you think well i think we just need to have a breath we just need to stop for a minute. I think as artists, blackfellas, you know, we're, we've been resilient and we've been surviving for 80,000 years, but we're, we're problem solvers as well. But I think that we don't know what the problem is yet. So I think we just need to just, just be at the moment, just see what's going to happen, have some gentle thoughts, but I think just, just for all of us, just to, just to know what it is we're moving into because it's changing hour by hour at the moment. Agreed. But you it know? sounds like so, one of the things you're saying, Ben, is that we do need these um, protocols for virtual world. And I'm going to put that on our agenda, I think, Lydia, to, to follow up and say, okay, let's look at someone who can speak about what some of those protocols are because I know that it will. It, the, how does our protocol and code of conduct go from our, our analog world into our digital world more and how are we protecting that uh, in that and world? how are we staying connected because I'm, I am loving that we're doing this but you know I do get concerns about people that don't have internet or that aren't in this virtual world 
how, how are they surviving? Or, you know, what, what's going on with it? They're probably actually the best ones off, really. Well, um, I'm going to Lydia, quickly then. In the Creative Connections series, Terry Jenke will be talking about protocols and also looking at the realm of digital protocols. Um, and while our communities may not have computers, so to speak, we are the highest mobile users. And in some regards, um, it's perhaps rethinking and reimagining how that particular platform is good. You spoke about a digital think tank, Ben, in regards to the whole spectrum of uh, sensibilities that come into play. Are you thinking from the Tri Nations perspective about starting a, a think tank where people are interested to really sort through all of these kind of considerations? I think so. And I think for us, being a part of the Tri Nation um, Council, which is, you know what I mean, an ongoing beast and is, is definitely something that is ever evolving, um, is, is looking at how we remain, first off, how we remain connected locally, nationally, and then internationally. And then how do we continue the work that's happening that's already been going on for years ago, but in the, in the new format since, you know, APAM, I think it was 2014. And so the, the first dialogues will be about how are we as a tri-nation surviving and thriving? And then how can we use that to, to really be at the forefront of the work that we're already doing and connecting and networking as international First Nations people, which we are excelling at, how do we continue to do that and continue to invite people in? Which I think we is 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 actually exceptionally um, a great idea to be able to do virtually. Um, and we, I suppose, we were doing it at, at small in small ways, but this just blows it out to be able to, um, you know, do things like this and and have other people involved in it that you know um, w weren't able to get to APAM or weren't able to physically be somewhere, this really opens it up. Great, thank you so much, Ben. I know that we've got such little time, but I think that this is something we should return to. Um, we've got one question, we're saying, has anyone seen the army lately? And can I say, out my window uh, over here, there's a, a tree, and I have not seen so many birds in that tree since living here for five years. There's something about what's going on where we're very much seeing the the natural world our world coming back into the fore and i'm filled with joy about that actually to see more birds to hear more birds and you know if the classic thing if we get out of the way our land actually speaks to us it's such a beautiful thing when we step back and don't let the machinery and the everything else it's so beautiful it's the uh, lily saying here that the sky is bluer you know the water tastes sweeter <laughs> i guess It'd be great to hear from Terry Janke a little bit about that. Um, we've only got a little bit more time, uh, and there's still 160 of us online, which is fantastic. But we just want to go on to the, the next slide for us, which is just a bit of a pulse check-in. Um, I'll be looking at over here on the, on the chat line, how's everyone going? I think Ben really summed it up when he was talking about things moving so quickly and feeling this sense of where is everyone? Where are we physically in the world as well? You know, uh, many people talking about, yes, Mother Earth is loving the break. I heard one meme which is, says, this is, this is the spirits telling, sending us back into our bedrooms to think about what we've done. You know, <laughs> I love this idea that, that, there, that there's something in the world going there. Nadine McDonald talking about being chaotic, mentally and physically chaotic. Um, that we have been uh, sent enough signs by fire, flood, disease, survival of the fittest, yes, maybe. A time to reflect, Andrew says. He says, maybe take this time to have a little look around. It's moving very fast, Michael West says. Um, you have a nap and everything changes. You get up. In fact, while we've been online, I know the Prime Minister has had a, a, a press conference. So it'd be interesting to see what happened there. Um, I'm good reminding everyone to stop and breathe and honour the myriad of emotions that we're feeling. And Mother Earth is our solace, is our supporter. Um, thanks, Wesley, Leanne and Lydia. Oh, thanks, Helena. I know some people are having to move on. Lots of people concerned about old people and, and feeling sometimes this anxiety, this sense of uh, an anxious attacks, panic attacks, um, how to look after each other. Please look after each other in this time. It's so important. Let's move on to the next slide. Um, keep talking to each other along the way. It's always good. It's just really about what's next and how do we collectively work together. I think Ben was saying that. I think 
in many ways, all the speakers today were saying, what are we doing? How are we doing it? What are our steps going forward? I just know that it's, it's five minutes past three now. We'll just take a couple of minutes to consider what's going on in this fast tra changing world. Just know that what we're committing to is every Friday from two o'clock to three o'clock, we'll have this format and that we are also on the website. Uh, there'll be captioned um, versions of these uh, recordings. If you didn't see us last week, you can get online and have a look at that. There'll also be different documents you can access along the way as well. Different things that are coming through. Yes, so that's two o'clock to three o'clock New South Wales time. Uh, sorry, Thomas E.S. Kelly, extra sexy Kelly. That, um, so if you're in uh, Western Australia or in central time, that if that's two o'clock Sydney time. Uh, so have a little look at that, New South Wales time. Uh, and there'll be different time zones around. That's 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock in WA. Thank you, Eva Grace, for that. Um, and every cloud has a silver lining, Claire saying. Uh, one o'clock to two o'clock Queensland time. So you'll be able to work out your time. In fact, there's always a, a little um, invitation you can check out. I know we're coming to the end of our time, uh, but if you can just spend some time. Um, because this is what's coming up next, we want to bring you as well panel um, discussions, which no doubt all of you have said this is really, really good. So if you're interested in being on a panel about a topic, but also if you're interested in hearing topics that you think are really important that we discuss as a collective at this time, that would be really good and send that in place. Thanks, Wesley. Marvellous. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. We went a little bit over time, but I think that's not a big issue. Um, but just to say, there's lots of supports out there. Have a look around. Um, and apparently, just to end, end with this now saying, three hours ago, they cancelled the Cook uh, anniversary celebrations or commiserations. So the idea of going, you know, we're out there. Our spirits are out there making things happen. So can I say thank you so much for everyone. Thank you so much for the panellists for sharing your ideas, Ali, Travis, Philip and Ben. Thank you so much. If you want to speak, if you've got something you want to hear about, come on out, talk to us. Steve Miller saying, just look to, look to um, Biami every morning in your garden. See us grow stronger every time we believe in our spirits as well. Thank you so much for coming on board. We'll see you next week. Much love to you. Look after yourself. Stay safe. Look after our elders and our stories and our culture. There's nothing more important than us at the moment. Look after us as a community by looking after yourself. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.